Battery monitor. Yesterday I was emphasizing how people think they have miraculous batteries. Or better still, they have devices that don't draw power. A fridge that draws no power. Or a boat that uses one-fourth of the power that all other boats in the same category and size use. Their boat is a miracle, but unrelated, their batteries don't last. I've had these crazy situations. I'm like, the problem is the shunt. Not that it fails, is that it's installed in a location where it does not capture all the negative cables and intercepts all negative cables going to the battery. This is the number one problem with battery monitors. And I cannot tell you how many people do not understand what a battery monitor is. I'm not talking about you as the owner operator. I'm talking about everyone that works on your boat. Everyone. They go in, you ask a technician to wire SPAR or hydronic or whatever heater system on your boat, anybody. The manual says connect directly to the battery. Okay, that's what I'm going to do because they take the letter of the law. Where do they install the negative? They install the negative literally on the negative post. That's what the manual said. Well, the manual said that because they're making life somewhat simple. They don't know that what your boat is like. They're assuming that the installer has a certain level of education and understanding in boat electrical systems. What they meant to say is bring it to the battery negative, but if you have a positive DC negative distribution, bring it to there, especially if you have a battery monitor and a shunt because if your heater is connected directly to the negative post on your battery, your heater will not be counted in your battery monitor. And so, miraculously, your heater draws never no power. Your heater is magic. It, it's sort of like that tree that my mother reminded me when I was growing up all the time that money doesn't grow on a tree when I was asking her for more money. No, well, your heater draws power. I know it uses fuel to generate heat, but that distribution of heat is not magical. It's not just it happens like that. Like there is an electrical component, hence why it's connected to a battery. If it was not electric, there would be no electrical component to it. So if you bypass the shunt, if your fridge bypasses the shunt, oh, uh, people connect downriggers. What does a person that you delegate the downrigger installation task to? That person's technical ability is how high on the spectrum? Eh, you're like, it's a downrigger. It's stupid. It's simple. I'm going to hire, you know, Freddie. He... Uh, he works for beer. I get people asking me if I work for beer at the time. I'm like, no, like it is not a currency. I'm like, seriously, that is insulting and never. Please keep going, keep calling. It's not gonna happen. So you ask Freddie, we're gonna, hey, you know, I want downriggers, right? How hard could it be? It's just a boat and it's so reliable, unrelated. Why are the downriggers right here? Bypassing the shunt. I use my downriggers all day, never draws any power. That's how efficient my downriggers are. They're the best, but my batteries always die. I just don't get it. Like, downriggers aren't a problem. Definitely not, they don't draw power, but my batteries are always dead at the end of my fishing day. Do you, can you, do you think my batteries are bad? Like, should we ask for a warranty? I'm like, uh, no, your downriggers that you're using on an eight hour fishing day, constantly going up and down, bypasses the shunt. You have no idea what your batteries are doing, and hence your batteries die. That's another one. Guy changes your fridge. Compressor looks at the panel. He's like, whoa, hey, I'm a fridge guy. Let's not get too involved here. I'm going where? To the battery. Inverter. I'm putting an inverter on your boat, and I'm a self perceff expert. I know everything about electrical because I've worked on your mechanical engine before. I will invert, put the inverter right on the house battery. Bypasses the shunt. Everything goes to the battery because conceptually, think about it, it's the less intimidating thing on your boat. It's a positive and a negative post. As you go down into the boat, it becomes not brain surgery, but you're like, where the hell do I go? What do I connect it to? It's too hard. Cannot tell you how many things get connected to the house battery for that reason. Bypass the shunt, you lose the whole purpose of this. You can't manage your battery bank. Your battery bank dies prematurely. Then you replace your battery bank. Or at the time, you'll blame always the battery manufacturer, of course, because, you know, they'll pick up the phone. But in reality, what you're doing is you're actually, the, the problem is on your boat. Other big issue, people will install the, especially the main voltage sense at the panel. And this is a big issue because one of the biggest advantages of having a battery monitor is the ability to tell me what is the battery at the battery. 
So when your panel dies and you have no power of the panel and it's the end of the world and it's dark and it's catastrophic and it's the end of the world and you're on your trip and this is like, you have no batteries on your boat, like it's pretty much over, right? I mean, you're not going to be floating out there like without power. So this is the end of your trip. You're on the phone. You're like, oh my God, what's going on? I lost my batteries. I'm like, okay, wait, go to your battery monitor. Do you see voltage? And if I've powered the voltage and the power directly to the battery, right, directly to the battery, and I see power there, I'm like, aha, we have power at the batteries. It's a distribution problem. The problem goes from literally category five hurricane to, okay, we're, you know, it's a little bit of a storm, but it's okay. Now we need to figure out how do we get power from the batteries to the panel. And generally it's a switch or a fuse that blown or a thermal circuit breaker that blown. And without this capacity, if it was not wired there, and most people take shortcuts because they want to believe that things are easy, and they look at the instructions and they show wire to the battery, they're like, isn't my battery my panel? It's the same thing. Engineers, they're making things complicated. This is so easy. Why would I listen to them? They don't know what the hell they're talking about. I know better. I'm going to wire everything right at my panel. Unrelated, every time they turn their battery switch off, this gets reset because it has no memory. So now every time they reset, their amp hour settings go away. So their battery monitor is off, but that's not a big problem. And then when they lose power of the panel, they don't know they have power of the battery. And this is actually checking voltage, which is really important to the battery, which is a difference between voltage under no load and voltage at a load wherever it is in the panel. So that's why the problems with a battery monitor is it needs to be, and I would say less than 50% of battery monitors on a boat are working properly. I'd say, yeah, maybe more like 70, 80%. You have one, but someone bypassed the shunt. They did. It was just too, they just didn't get why that device was there. Any questions on battery monitors?